Welcome to the Odd Frog Chop Shop, your one-stop podcast for all things toy, design, collectible, comic book, video game, movies, pop culture, and more. And now, please welcome your hosts, Kelly Greenwood and Eddie Eremosio. Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the Odd Frog Chop Shop. Your hosts, Eddie and Kelly, we're back with another episode, episode 8. And today, it's just me and Kelly, we figured we would... uh. Chop it up about the Bandito 2.0, the progress, the updates. Just all about the car, all about the chop shop. Basically, sell it, pitch it, and uh, take suggestions, take questions, and go from there. So, yeah. Yeah, guys. So, basically... um... You know, you might have seen last week we posted some images on Instagram. We got the car back from Johnny, the first renders of the new model, and uh, very happy with the way it turned out. So this this cast is going to be basically all about, like, showing the car, uh, making our pitch on the car. We're going to be launching a Kickstarter as soon as we have the physical model. Actually, as soon as we have images and video of the uh physical model we're going to launch our kickstarter so we're going to rely heavily heavily on you know uh word of mouth and crowd you know getting this instagram and podcast word out and having people share images and stuff we're not going to be doing anything until we have the physical prototype once we have the physical prototype we're going to launch the kickstarter eddie and i have done a lot of research into the kickstarter scenario uh to get this car built and manufactured we looked into Indiegogo, other things like that. It just, you know, with the history of like the other garage and stuff, Eddie and I feel that going with the Kickstarter is the most legit way to do it. No one is charged or build anything until we reach our goal, which also means if we reach our goal, we've got tooling, we've got shipping, and we've got uh, third-party logistics covered for uh, the car. So that's why we've kind of landed on the Kickstarter idea. Um, you know, also we'll be talking with other distributors and stuff. We've been in communication with other distributors, with a big distributor. Um, so yeah, again, today it's just going to be about showing you guys the new model. I'm going to share my screen. Eddie's going to talk about design and conversations he's had with our engineer. And we're just going to go through it. So uh, without further ado... I'm going to go ahead and just mute my mic and bring up some images and uh, I'll chime in as we're talking about it. But uh, I'm going to let Eddie go ahead and uh, talk about this design. Yeah, the design. Uh, I don't know. Um, growing up in Southern California, uh, being of Latino descent, the whole lowrider culture is appealing to me. It's pretty cool. I like the classic Oh, sharing the wrong window. There we go. Yeah, I like the classic style car look. I'm a big fan of Chevys. Um, so this was, you know, influenced by, oh, by Chevy, like the Impala, the Chevelle. You know, I took a little bits and pieces from like the 66, the 65s, the 64s, mainly Chevelles. But this is, this is what, where we landed. Uh, the interior, I mean, I don't know what to say. Kelly was gawking over it earlier, but I can see why he was doing it again. This is this is my, my dream car when, when it all said and done, then the day would be like a 60, anywhere between a 64 and a 66 Chevy Chevelle. So this is what I, I decided to design and go with, with the help of Kelly. And we, we kind of mocked something up and uh, sent it over to our engineer team. So we basically kind of, we we came up with a rough concept first of all since since it does take a lot to have these produce on a wide scale you know the engineering that goes into these is is detailed labor intensive work you know you got to go down to the millimeters and so we we designed the mock up send it over to our engineer team and they literally from scratch designed the whole thing again they they started with the frame the bodies they did the chassis the interior it's all it's all started from scratch 
making it our own original models. See, there you go. That's that's the more less rendered, but you know, kind of like a shaded version of the render, which shows you the geom the, the 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 geometry, the geometry. Anyways, that line back there, that design, that was Johnny. You know, I I allowed him to take creative like influence and. He's a big, big, we rely on him a lot. So I was like, yeah, throw something in there, design on there, throw the logo on there. That's our, our logo, the new logo. So this week they're actually working on the hinges. The body was completed. They're working on all the hinges for the hood, the two doors, the back. And um, I told him again to double check that it's all being scaled in uh, in coordinates with uh, using like a, a six and a half inch figure. So. And I should, I need, he, he'll be sending me images soon, but I'm it is, the length is like six. It's actually a one twelfth um, scale almost exactly because I went ahead and looked up the dimensions of actual Chevy Chevelle. And then you break them down to one twelfth scale divided by 12. And it's, it's, it's almost on the money size wise. So, I mean, I think it'll fit comfortably with enough head space, the six inch, six inch and a half inch figures, whatever line. It's just going to be perfect. Two should be, two will fit in the front. We're trying to get that third one in the back. It should fit in the back. We should at least get three to four figures in this car. Trunk space. There's plenty of trunk space. They're working on the engine details. So we're not, we're not, you know, just making a little shell. It's, we're taking everything into consideration. Like we posted this earlier the, in this earlier the week and people were asking if, one specific question was addressing the wheels, like would the steering wheel cause the wheels to turn? And it's something we talked to the engineer team about. It would cause it to maybe delay it, but I told him even if we can just have the wheels turn, like not necessarily a entire mechanism that has the wheel connected to a, a shaft that causes the wheels to turn, that would definitely put us behind our current projected schedule. So even if the wheel, the, the steering wheel could turn and you just kind of turn the wheels by, by hand, just obviously for picture purposes, I'm assuming is why we would go that route, toy photography and all. But yeah, I asked him about it. So he's looking into that. We're working into it. The details are all getting done. I'm actually getting the rims changed. I should have showed you some images. These rims are cool, but... I'm 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 a fan more of like this slightly thinner wheels with the more elaborate rims. So when we get new images, of those we'll we'll show those. But yeah, we plan on doing interchangeable rim kits, tires. The wheels themselves are going to be a, a like a rubber a rubber wheel material, so it won't be just hard plastic. Yeah, those lights are getting wired. Uh, yeah. Talk to me, Kelly. What's up, bro? I don't know. Oh yeah, there we go. Check it out. This is this will be so once once the bandido is fully funded, like Kelly said, we we've taken the number of units we need to sell into consideration. We put the price up. So once we get once we reach our 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 first tier, I guess. I guess go back to the car. Let's keep talking about the car for a minute. So with the car. We started talking about tiers. Um, this, of course, is going to be actually more of a matte black color, like a high-end matte black, so it's easier for paint applications, so you can, you know, customize the body whatever color you want eventually. That's the goal. That's that's one of the main the main pitches of our line. It's like a 112 scale customizable vehicle line where you can customize the vehicles to whatever color you want whatever uh you want racing stripes skulls on it and you know it, whatever your heart desires you're able to paint it on there it you know of course you would seal it and but we're targeting that customization aspect of the community or even if you just want to leave it a nice cool matte black color you know but we'll see what it looks like when it once we get our own once we get one in hand but uh, yes, speaking of tiers, we were talking about tiers of, so we want to include decals. Like I said, you can, we would like vinyl decals. It won't be like stickers or nothing, but that you would be able to apply and take off and won't leave any residue. 
these are the the line drawings we're going to use to accurately design decals to fit perfectly on the body of the vehicle so yeah we were thinking um yeah racing stripes skulls flames bullet holes you know cracks to make the windshields look cracked and even just like intricate designs that you would see on lowriders is something i want to make that you could put on the cars themselves and and then with the tiers we spoke about accessories um yeah rims the rims would be the tires are gonna be interchangeable i don't know that design looks like uh yeah i i was asking that i don't think the wheels as of now the wheels do not turn so just to clarify that they do not turn we're looking into it but you know the bottom details are there there's you know the details are there and uh yeah you can paint them customize it like i said but the tiers, um, we want to include accessories and rims. So we're thinking about like barrels and gas cans and tanks and just to make it even more worth, more worth it. But I mean, to me, that's, I mean, for 175, which is our projected MSRP, if all continues, which seems to be on that path, everything's been going out, been going well as of now since the whole debacle with the last garage ever since we, we launched on our own and did our own marketing and our own everything, everything seems to be going a lot better. So we're content with that. But yeah, 175 is our projected MSRP. And yeah, we want to, uh, yeah, to actually, speaking of that, to um, incentivize this thing a bit more. Uh, we've talked about and I think we've concluded and we've agreed upon that like the first 2,500 people to buy one will get a $25 gift certificate for their next purchase or a credit. We'll figure out the details, but you'll get $25 off your next, next order for the first 2,500 people to buy it. That again would guarantee and give us space to have it made, have the units made, take care of the tooling, take care of the shipping, to have it shipped here, and cover the logistics once it arrives. So we have to have a company pick it up at the docks, take it to a warehouse, open up the boxes, individually label them, make sure they're packed, make sure the because they're, they're going to have custom custom boxes themselves. Like It's not going to be like some of these third-party vehicles where you get styrofoam and it's inside of a, a cardboard box. Ours will have art it's going to have our name on it it's going to have you know a little description in the back of it it's going to have it's going to be like a, a something you see at the shelf on target at walmart you it's going to have the same level of detail this is all stuff we learned again while at otis college again shout out to otis so they so yeah we we took everything into consideration we're not just putting out just some simple you know people are asking about selling the stls i mean we're this is this is being made for mass market like it there's no S we, yeah, we have STLs, but there's no STL like, no, like this is being produced high end collector grade up on that shelf, customizable in mass numbers is our goal. Like we're trying to put these out in the thousands of units. And I mean, from the feedback we've been getting and with the whole, I don't know, just everything in general, I've, I've changed my perspective on, on, many things recently within the last few years, my whole outlook on life and just after graduating school, like what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And, you know, toys was it, but like Kelly mentioned in one of our previous episodes, once you're in the industry, you kind of get to, to realize what it's like. And, and I don't know, we're just not built to be employees. Like we need to take charge. I feel and I know Kelly feels the same way. Like we need to take charge of the operation. And I, I feel comfortable. I feel confident now that things are in play. Most of it is all in my hands now. So and the funding came in from, from, from my father. He helped us fund it. And so now like in, in the past, we weren't sure if the funding was there. Somebody else had the money. This was that, this was that. But now it's all, it's all Odd Frog Entertainment. It's all me and Kelly. And that's why we say keep reaching out to us with questions because we're going to make this happen one way or another to quote, to quote uh, a rapper, you know, 50 Cent, get rich or die trying. We probably won't die, but we're going to get rich one way or another. 
goal is not to die, but you know, eventually we all do. But yeah, we're making this vehicle for us, for you. Like we wanted to make it because we want to see it. We know the market needs it. But then we're taking suggestions. We're taking ideas. We're trying to suit our market. You know, we're trying to take you guys into consideration. Absolutely. I think you're still muted, Kelly. Yeah, I'm muted. So yeah, that was um, a little bit of what I had to say on it. I don't know. I could go on and on about it, but yeah. if I missed anything, go ahead and say something. Here, let me stop sharing and then unmute. Okay, yeah. So yeah, um, and I'm gonna go back to sharing here. I just I have a very sensitive mouse, so it's uh, it's yeah. A bring little, them back uh, up, man. It gets a little complicated, but um, yeah, you know, we like I said. Looking into it, the Kickstarter definitely seems to be the way to go for us, for the trust of the community. You know, we don't want to charge anybody unless we hit our goal and know that it can be delivered. So, you know, at about 2500 like Eddie said, we know for sure that we can get the product made. Tooling's paid for at that point. Um, and, uh, and we can get it shipped and that covers also third party logistics as far as like shipping it to each individual address. Um, and, you know, yeah, we, we'd like to put some tears in there. You know, we're not has lab. We don't have all the money and stuff that they do. Yeah. We're uh, not a big corporation with multi million dollars and thousands of products. Right. You know, we don't have that backlog that we can just kind of throw characters at it and stuff, but you know, like I said on previous podcasts, Eddie and I really put a lot of the 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 pricing into the vehicle. We we you guys have characters. We understand that you guys have uh six, six and a half inch, one twelve scale characters. We don't need to give you a character right off the bat, especially if we're not ready to. We 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 don't have a character ready to go enough to promise putting it in there. I mean, we're working on the vehicles right now because um that's what the community was was asking for and uh you know we're we've worked really hard to get to this point with this car uh like i said uh, we had a little bit of a wind taken out of our sails when hasbro released their 112 muscle car and it's cool everybody seems to like it we like it um but we like ours better obviously so so you know in the next few months we're going to be uh, really pushing this car. Um, you know, we understand that there's trepidation again, uh, with the fact that we had contracted with another company and, and that, that didn't work out, but you know, this is ours. Now we have done a lot of work, put a lot of design effort and a lot of our own, uh, capital into this design. And, uh, we really hope you guys like it. And, uh, like I said, we're going to rely on a lot of you guys to kind of put the word out there. Um, once we do get the physical model and launch the Kickstarter, it's go time. So we, we'd like to sell 10,000, you know, we're set up to produce about 50,000. So once it, I, that's what I know we had built in to it. So I know Johnny knows that we need to at least have that many available. Um, but I'm sure, you know, I don't know. I'd have to talk to him after that. I'm sure there's, the ability to do more. And I mean, once the tooling is there, it's ours. So, um, you know, we want to offer that tier where what's that? Yeah. That's the other thing. If we can get up to 5,000, you know, we think that would be able to give us a little bit of extra capital to do like some different colors and maybe offer this white version as the ghost killer deluxe model, you know, and put out 500 or so of those as a collector model. Um, you know, it all depends on, um, how many people invest in the Kickstarter and in the car. Uh, I think, you know, like Eddie and I had talked about on previous episodes, I think we've really narrowed it down to a fair price tag. Uh, and like I said, all the money from our MSRP has gone into the design of the car. We're not trying to throw characters and, you know, pre-tooled characters with extra heads and stuff like that. It's just the car, guys. We just want to get our line of vehicles going. Vehicle. Yeah. Vehicle. You know, like I said, after this, we uh, we want to launch the van within about three months yeah. of having 
this successful Kickstarter with the car, we'd like to launch the Kickstarter on the bad band, which is bigger and bigger, bigger batter, more details. I mean, it's going to be perfect for some of your characters like blade and punisher. I mean, it's, it's just perfect. It's tactical. Um, it's got a lot of room to add stuff. There's space on the car to customize. So, so yeah, I mean, if we can offer $25 off your next purchase is just a way to say thank you and uh, getting us over that hurdle of getting the car made, you know, we're more than happy to do that. And, you know, if it's, if you want to buy two cars, I know there's a, there's some father son teams out there we've been talking to. So, you know, hopefully that'll help a little bit, you know, buy this car and take $25 off and buy your next one. Um, so that's what we're looking into right now. We've got the Kickstarter ready to go. We're kind of still plugging in the numbers, waiting on that physical model. We're creating some media to be able to put with it because we want it to be successful. And uh, I'll just mention one thing that I was kind of surprised about, you know, I'm learning all about the Kickstarter and, and how to do one successfully. And it turns out we've kind of been doing everything already. You know, we've, we've got the Instagram that um, thanks to you guys is growing steadily. And now we've got this podcast where it gives us a forum to kind of put the word out there and sell our wares, so to speak. Um, and, and be able to put images of the car up and talk with you guys. So, so that part, I think we've got, you know, pretty covered and, and um, you know, like I said, we want this to be a, to get, funded fully funded so we're doing everything on our ends to try to get that get that going and um yeah like i said all we really have to do is get that physical model and then plug everything in and launch the kickstarter and then you know we'll do another a podcast similar to this where we're like okay it's go time like and share please spread the word we'll be putting out multiple images of the car every day for people to share um We'd like to get a couple prototypes to where we can send to some of the influencers on YouTube. I particularly like analog toys, um, Foosh, and uh, I know Shardimus. Shout out to Shardimus. Um, so we'd like to get some cars. It's in the hands of um, of some of these YouTube creators and stuff. So. We can just say, can you can you talk about our car? Can you look at it? Can you can you put your characters in it, and and get it in front of as many people as possible? And again, we're going to be building all sorts of media for it, videos with music, like we've kind of been doing. But now this is ours. This is our car. Uh, it's not going anywhere. So we'll be able to build like legit marketing uh, videos and and stuff for it. So yeah. And, uh, I'll pass it back to you, Eddie. And, uh, maybe we can get into talking about the bad man a little bit and, um, you know, why, it, why that $25 could be, uh, helpful on your next, on the next line, the next vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> damn, where'd it go? I have so many points. Okay. Our mics are like not the best. So we have to mute in between because it, there would just be echo in the system all day. It kind of sucks. We can't hold a uh, constant conversation. So, like, when he says something and I'm like, oh, okay, I want to say this. I want to say that. But now it's like, uh. anyways, um, I don't know. Bring the pictures back up. Maybe it'll jog my memory. Um, what was I going to say about it? Yeah, I mean. Oh, the bad band, I think you want to talk about a little Yeah, bit. we want to talk about the bad band. So, yeah, incentivizing, you know. Um. Yeah, getting 2,500 pays for it. But, you know, like Kelly was saying, if we were able to get 5,000, if we're able to get 10,000, that then already covers the funding for the next project. Like, so it, we would be able to jump right into it. Yeah, this one, yeah, this one took some time. I wanted to, uh, I took influence from, uh, obviously, the Punisher, the Netflix series, uh, the Ninja Turtles vans from the 90s, the newer ones. I mean, I just made it a mobile artillery unit. I mean, should be able to fit two figures in the front, one of them in that little command station, and at least two in the back. I mean, you can get one, but in the back, two figures. So I'm looking at five figures in there. 
it, it looks badass to me. I don't know. See, this is how we scale it to make sure. See that 17 inch? It looks a bit small in my opinion. So we're trying to go bigger. Uh, yeah, we're pricing this one out. We're going with, we're working on it as well right now. But yeah, we'll also have lights, the two opening doors, a whole sliding panel is going to come out so you can use that mini turret gun. The doors open, the ladder on the side of the driver's side. I went, decided to put it on the driver's side. I don't know why, because just, just because, because I wanted to, because I can, <laughs> you know, instead of the back or uh, that's probably the only place it would work functionally anyways, uh, to, for the rack up there. And then the racks, um, uh, the toolbox is going to open. The storage bin is going to open. It'll come with a gas can. So we're including more accessories with this one because we had more time. And, you know, I don't know. We, we want to throw in accessories with the Bandito. That would be cool, too. But this one has allowed us to plan it out a little bit more. Because the vehicle, the car. Sorry. The car was uh, the first project. And... It all had to get redesigned. I know some of you know the story, some of you don't. But, yeah, we had designed an entirely different car for a whole different company that's no longer no longer exists. So we redesigned the whole car. And, yeah, the van's ready to roll. The car's just about ready to roll. The hinges are getting done this week, so, you know, the doors will be ready. And everything's going to be good to go. We're thinking about having those parts be chromed. The bumpers be chromed already. Uh, it's like you can put chrome plating on after it's been. Maybe you can even mold it in like that chrome plastic. We'll see. But even like we want the headlight, the little headlight cones to maybe have the chrome in insert to better reflect the lights. Yeah, we're taking every possible detail into consideration to make it worth bang, make it worth. Yeah, for the photography, for the for the realism, for. I mean, it, it's, we wanted to look like legit scaled down version of our car. You know, we could, we were like car designers. But yeah, we have the motorcycle coming. That's something Kelly started not too long ago. So we're still working on that. But yeah, we want to have these tiers and doing a limited release white version. And. Man, I had more to say when you were talking, but this being put on the spot is kind of like, oh. Uh... Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, this is w what we've got in the frying pan right now. Um, obviously, the car is getting prototyped. Go ahead, Eddie. Let me – hold on. Give me one second to – I mean, I, I I was just gonna mention he had that in the frying pan, but our fourth, we're considering the fourth vehicle to be a police car. So I wanted to throw that out there. Um, you know, police cars range in a variety of aesthetics. These two first vehicles are based off more classic '60s, '70s style cars. So for the police car, I'm gonna we're asking a question, right? This is how we're going to directly involve the community. So for the, the fourth vehicle after the bike. So we're considering, like I said, a police car. Shoot out styles, years, and we'll take those into consideration, narrow down, take a poll. Yeah. Of, of what police style, what vehicle style. I've, I've looked some up myself. I already know. I mean, if none of them suit my fancy, we already have one that we want to go with. But we want to take suggestions from you guys. You know, maybe somebody has a better idea than what we have. And imagine that your 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 suggestion can be made into a product. That's you know, that'd be kind of cool. But yeah, I think what Eddie and I are trying to play with and keep in mind as we develop this line is what is the play pattern look like? I mean, obviously everybody's taking pictures and, and a lot of still photography and even some stop motion and stuff like that. But how do we continue the play pattern? So for us, it's like, well, how do we re-engage the car with the next vehicle? Oh, if we had a cop car, 
you could have kind of a Smokey and the Bandit situation or Cops and Robbers, and you've got the Bandito, and now you've got the cop car that's chasing down the bandits. And, you know, so whenever we're thinking about adding stuff to the line, we want it to be in conjunction with, with the story we're already telling. Um, so the cop car to us, you know, like one of the things that comes to mind is like the old blues brothers cop car, very classic, uh, probably a little older than the car we're working on, but something like that seventies style, um, you know, police vehicle that we could really get some cool action shots and some chase scenes going would be, would be fantastic. <clears throat> um, yeah, what do you think about that, Eddie? Yeah, we want to carry on our aesthetic, carry on like with, with I don't know, it, you got to keep it all together. You got to keep it in, this, in, in, in conjunction with each other. But see, so for anybody who wants to look some things up, the vehicles I'm considering are a 1965 Dodge Coronet. So we'll take influences and then we'll, we'll you know, if you can see that, you can kind of see that. Or um, I think the other one was a uh, a Fairline. Is that a Ford? A Ford? Yeah, Fairlane, yeah. a Ford Fairlane, which is also pretty badass. And it, you know, they carry on with the same aesthetic as these first two vehicles. Because yeah, we can do uh the cliche Crown Victoria that's been around for a while, but then it wouldn't fit necessarily. I don't. I guess. I could fit in in the world like we're we're making this world with random characters. It's it's almost gonna be like like Mezco's Rumble Society, where they have all these characters with storylines, and they don't really connect. I guess the storylines do connect with each other, but the characters just just off the wall. Some of them, you know. And that's kind of what we're going for. And but we're we're focusing on the vehicle line first and then introducing characters as we go along to fit our stories and our promotional material and our artwork and and whatnot. So yeah, that's what we'll be developing next. Promotional material. I don't know if some of you saw I posted it on the Chop Shop Instagram. I started working on um a diorama that's inspired by uh Shout out to Tears of Titan. Uh, he's an amazing dio. I don't know. I saw his diorama and it's the perfect color. It's the perfect size. So I decided to replicate it and I'm making my own. But yeah, we're going to be developing promotional material. Just in efforts to put out content more regularly and to get you guys more involved. But yeah, we want to have this dial set up to take pictures. And since that's the 112 community is a lot about also, you know, of course, collecting and playing. and But photography is something that's picking up steam a lot. And I've been playing with it myself, and I thoroughly enjoy it. So creating these dioramas of a 112 scale garage is going to be cool. It's going to be the official 112 Street Chop Shop in the world that we're creating. So we'll have characters in there. We'll throw Jones Bones in there. And, you know, the bandita will... will be the first car to roll up in there pretty soon and yeah we're just all really excited to see this come to fruition pretty soon we're working on the cover not the cover the artwork for the box the customized box we'll share that soon and yeah it's just all exciting it's all coming coming together you know the pieces the puzzle got scattered for for a while but the pieces are all coming back together and 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 we're finding all the right pieces we're connecting everything and we're setting it up for a big success and in, in my eyes and that's wholeheartedly what i believe that with y'all's help we can sell 50 60 70 100 thousand units i mean there's no way i think it's possible yeah so uh i do too eddie i love that kind of positive thinking and um you know, we'd love to do that. It would just set up everything else. We have big plans and, um, you know, we're just so happy that we kind of started this. We love the interaction and um, we love being able to share stuff with you guys that we're working on. Um, 
and kind of bringing everybody along for the ride. For me, it feels like, um, you know, that it, we'll have this core group of real solid followers and, and, and collectors that followed us from the beginning. And that feels really, really good. So we appreciate you guys tuning in. We appreciate you guys checking out our new vehicle. Stay tuned. If it's not on the next podcast, which it probably won't be, but the following one after that, we should have our physical model and we should be launching the Kickstarter and we're going to need everybody's help. So once again, like, and subscribe guys. We, uh, we love doing this. We're going to keep doing it and uh, share it, you know, share it out to the community, especially this one where we're, we really want to start making people aware that the car is out there. It's in prototype right now. And, uh, you know, like I said, you've heard it all. We, we contracted with another company. That company is gone now. This car is ours. And uh, we'll be launching the Kickstarter soon. We appreciate all your sp- support. And uh, one more time, guys, like and subscribe and have a great week. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Odd Frog Chop Shop podcast. This episode is brought to you by MLCVoice.com and OddFrogEntertainment.com. Theme music is Burlesque Heartache by RKVC. Please remember to rate and subscribe. Until next time, keep creating and keep playing.